Today, my friends, we will be building the biggest, most important, most essential component of our base. And it involves this, me slowly freezing my butt in powdered snow. Why could it possibly be this way? Well, we, we, we need this powdered snow. It is the last essential component that we need to build a contraption that's going to fill the entirety of this room. And these are all the materials that I've gathered for building this. Well, I say all. Obviously, we're going to have some building blocks too, but you can probably guess what we're going to be building here. It is a storage system, but not just any storage system. One that I haven't built before, and one that is considered to be one of the best types in the game. And using Schematica, we can bring it into this area. You can see why there's some big abstract holes in the middle of this room, and you can get an idea of the massive construction project ahead of me. But since I've been making my preparations, it turns out the author of this wonderful system, who is Cass of the Mizuma Games channel, has actually updated this for 1.19, which we're not on yet. So now you can see this system is even bigger. We don't actually need some of these big spaces going down into the ground, but I may have to dig out some other spaces for some of the redstone. And you can see all of the wizardry here that I have to rebuild using the schematic mod to bring this incredible storage system onto the server. So hopping into the world download for this fantastic system, you can see that there are actually several different designs available and I've decided to go for this one over here. Not for the aesthetics, which I'm not going to be rebuilding. I'll probably put my own spin on how I want this thing to look. And as I've said, I've never built this type of storage system in the past. It's been around for a while and when I understand it better, I will explain how the magic works. But what you're able to do is actually create a filter out of a chest where you define which blocks you want going into the chest down at the front. And so we can create our own storage filters back here and then categorize all the different items in the game into our own desired chests. Now if you want to build this yourself and get your hands on this world download then head over to Cass's channel which is Mizuma Games. It'll be linked in the description box down below. And so it has begun. Things are getting exciting about now and I've gone round and added a few extra things from where we were doing the time lapse. We've got the redstone lamps. Those are going to flicker when this thing is active, which is super cool. So I've gone around and placed even more comparators around the place. There are a few other minor details here and there. I've added some additional rails that were required and this I found to be rather interesting. Look at that for a moment and ask yourself, how is that powered rail powered right now? Because it believes it's connected to this powered rail, I guess the powering of the rail gets passed from one to the next, so it passes it down, which I found rather curious. If we turn on the schematic for a moment, you can see that there's supposed to be a pillar here that leads to a, a smoker or a furnace. And here in the world download, you'll see that it doesn't actually have storage chests behind it, but if we go up to the filter itself, you'll see that there are different fuel types in here. Now I'm not going to do the same thing in the middle, but it's given me the idea that perhaps we could have a filter around the back here to extract fuel and just bring it across to this space and then have an automatic furnace in this room too, which I think would be super cool. Anyways, I've got quite a bit of work left to do as I haven't set up any of the filters yet, which will actually take a really long time. I've got to go in and configure all of these chests, filling them up with items and then putting in the things that we want filtered. And we've also got to build the input system, which I believe deals with unloading shulker boxes and non-stackable items. As you can see, it's a monstrosity of redstone here. Now this took longer than all of that to build because it was just so intricate and full of little details. 
Not only was I using Light Matica to see where the blocks were, I have another Minecraft on the other screen with the world download so that I can just follow along block by block. As there are lots of little details like this where you need to have some items in a dropper because uh, when it gets powered it creates a pulse up the top here and then also you've got some stuff involving signal strength like you need shears in there and these items in here. And when I thought I was finished, I decided to use Freecam like this and then mirror those exact movements in the other world so I could sort of go around and fine comb over every single little block and detail. And it turns out, even though I thought I was done, there was a few blocks like here and there that I had missed. So now I actually think this thing is ready to go. Alrighty then, so we have a chest here which is all of our items to be sorted. We can put shulker boxes in there and they'll be returned to this chest and then any non-stackable items should end up over here. So since we just worked on a big redstone project, I'm going to come over here and do these ones first of all. So the idea is that you just replace the buttons with the thing that you want to be automatically filtered into. So all of these items are going to end up in this row of chests. And we must make sure that we never put these items or any of the other ones used for filtering into the system. So I'll probably dispose of those safely later on, but for now, I think this means that we get to go ahead and chuck in a bunch of items and then we can see the machine is doing its thing. Stuff is happening. Mistakes were made. <laughs> this minecart here needed to have four sets of shears inside of it, which it did not. So I've sort of broken the system at the moment. Okay, the minecart hopper is back in the correct spot now. I've taken all the items back out of the system this is how it's supposed to be configured. There is always something that you manage to overlook, right? So in go the items all over again for sorting. Okay, look at this. Whatever item was here, redstone dust, is the one that's currently being sorted into the chest at the bottom. So yes, if you're looking into the filtering system at the back, you'll see the item that's currently being filtered disappear. And it has successfully done that for all of these right here, which is Fantastic. Now the next test is to put in a non-stackable item and also a shulker box. So we're going to chuck these two things in here and I've crafted this too. Now I haven't set up a filter for the netherrack. So in theory that's going to come over to the very end row of chests. These two right here for items that haven't been sorted. So we plop this in here and let's see if it works and while we wait i thought i'd mention that i'm not going to jump into just setting up like all of these filters straight away i do want to take a little bit of time to think about it and plan out the layout for the entire storage system so first of all it looks like the shulker box was successfully unloaded the items are out of it and the empty one was put into this chest and the sword made its way into the non-stackables here the redstone made its way into the chest and over on this side, look at that, the netherrack made its way over here. It would appear that we are all good to go with this amazing storage system and it is going to change the game for us for the rest of this season. I mean, look at this mess, just, ah, oh, disgusting. All these leftovers from projects, all these unorganized items. It's just as bad when you peer into the ender chest too. Ah, oh, so much random junk and it's all going to change from now on. I say that, but we are going to have one last stint doing some building with my disorganized ender chest. And that will take place over here at the commercial area where I have spent my time chopping down trees, making room for these glorious pathways. And my axe, it got worn down to a crisp and as you can see it's gone, sadly. Yeah, it broke. But as I was munching down on my bone mill, I just felt an ominous presence drawing me over to the tower we've built. Yes, the skeletal remains of this bony beast outstretching its arm to the sky, pulling in some sort of magic, has, has put a voice in my head, yeah. I've got voices in my head, peeps. It's been calling me to the altar where I can see a glimmer, a literal glimmer, not a glimmer of hope or something in my mind. There is something sitting there awaiting me. And this, my friends, looks like some sort of replacement Oof. So I shall muster all of my strength to pick this thing up from out of the ground. Oof. Look at that right there. We got ourselves a shiny new axe with a skull in the middle of it. Armor stand? Wait, you didn't see no armor stand. Oh yes, this is a thing of beauty right here. Maybe we should let more of our tools just diminish and 
maybe they'll get replaced by something amazing like this. And just in time, because I need to clear a few more trees. We have our path that comes around to the side of the mountain here. And then what I would like to do is have a path that looks more like those ones off in the distance go down through these trees and connect up with everything else. Before we get to all of that though, I'd like to thank the peeps in the comments down there just providing me with so many helpful tips. And one of these is related to the free cam. It turns out that there is a setting that allows you to change the movement type. And now it's like when you fly in creative mode, it's so much smoother, it's really nice. We are definitely going to be using this more often in our videos now. And wah, the new axe smites you in one blow. As for the mystery of the mobs spawning in the local forest harassing me while I'm trying to build, it turns out that they can spawn in light level 7 and under for natural light. This is like a distinction I didn't really quite pick up on. It's when you, the player, places down a light source that this will then prevent spawning all the way down to light level 1, right? So when I update this to show the skylight level as well, you can see how the skylight isn't blocking the mobs from spawning. The ones with the yellow outlines are where they can spawn. So you now see that there's actually tons of spawnable space around this area. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with me. And also thanks for letting me know that you enjoyed the music in the last video. I experimented with removing it this season and when I was editing the video it really felt like something was missing and I decided to throw in the music again and I think we're going to keep music in the episodes from now on. It really feels like it adds a lot to the episode, you know? Now let's get to the bridge building. As you can see I've got the coordinates hub enabled here to give me a rough idea of the distance from this spot over to here which is about 60 blocks across and 20 blocks down. And so with a little bit of math, we can see that we go, you know, three blocks across at a time. And then it starts to get a little bit awkward. This game would really benefit from being able to place a block just off the edge. Like imagine if you could just click into that empty space and it would know to put a block below. Some of you might be saying, well, what if you click on a block? The point then would be that that would be close enough for you to build to where you wanted to. And also it's kind of like awkward to place scaffolding on top of leaves because, you know, you've got to put a solid block down first. There's a few things in this game when it comes to building that could be refined, I think. Anyways, it was a little tedious, but now we've got this nice old stretch of road here. And again, we use the free cam just to get a feel for how this fits into the area. I think the slope is pretty nice. It's actually got a pretty similar level with the trees as the other roads do here too. So I think it's going to fit in well. And you know what? A moment ago, I was flying over here to look at the pallet for the road. It's mostly upwards facing deep slate with the occasional bits of cobble. Sometimes the deep slate is turned on its side and there's basalt facing up too. And I very much still like to fly around in this game, but it just kind of occurred to me again, the power of the free cam is that rather than, you know, taking a trip over there, I could just do this and have a look and a little reminder again. As you can see, I've got these materials all ready to go in my hotbar. And I forgot to factor in slabs into the equation, which always makes for smoother travel, right? Aha, look at all those beautiful slabs. And it gets a little wonky down the bottom here as we align things up with the road. And now, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's so much smoother to walk over, right? Yeah, it's all good having some slabs, but let's face it, everyone uses rockets. But that won't stop me from having a little fun doing some building. And obviously our pathway is narrower than the ones over there in the distance. So the trim that we're going to put on the side will be narrower too. Now, initially I was thinking two blocks, but the whole thing might look a little bit too fat this way. Yeah, I'm looking for this thing to have a slimmer footprint. So I think we'll take a break from trying to, you know, perfectly emulate what's going on here. We've already narrowed the middle of the road, so we're going to narrow the edges too. Dang, this place is gorgeous. I love the little bit of gardening at the edge here. I'm going to try and bring some of that over to this space at the bottom of the path where you can see things kind of connect up with the other road. But if we look up here, uh-huh, very uniform. And it's the structure that goes beneath that I think is really going to sell this. That's where we're going to kind of tie in the darkness of this tower by using textures like basalt and cobble over here. So I started to put together a bit of the structure. We're probably going to have it so there's like a pillar here and then maybe a gap of two or three segments and another pillar 
and that means I'm probably going to end up taking out some more trees too. But yeah, we're going to create those pillars evenly spaced and I think it's going to look amazing when it's done. And now that it is finished, I feel like I've become my own worst critic. I think one of the amazing things about Minecraft is something that someone else has done always looks really amazing, but when it's your creation you tend to be super critical of it. And compared to the roads that we got over here, I actually feel like this does really fit in quite nicely. But now that it's finished, I've been reminded of my desire to make more organic shaped structures this season, have things more random and chaotic like over here. I mean, random isn't the right word either really, is it? Because this is structured, but it tells a story and it does it without all of the blocks being uniform and repetitive. And now I kind of wish that I had made this bridge sort of janky and bony and crumbly and maybe drifting over to the side in one direction a little bit and coming back round again. If I have an excuse to build another bridge later in the season, we're going to try and do something like that. And obviously I still have Hello, <laughs> some work to do over here, but look, we made ourselves a couple of diamonds. That's actually my first sales this season, right? And we are now done with this project. I wanted a break between working on the storage system. We're going to get back to that. First of all, though, I need to drop Scar off some materials. I didn't fancy making a trip back to my base because I forgot a bunch of basalt. So I've been pinching it from his chests over here. And I will undertake that on the server in a moment, but first of all we need to kind of plan our storage system in creative mode. And I definitely did not make that clear, so let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. These filters right here, we need to configure what items are going into all of our chests. So behind me you can see that we've got a whole bunch of chests laid out on the floor. And the last two over here are the overflow, so these ones aren't going to be used. These are rows of 15, so that gives us a total of 43 different sets of blocks and items that we need to store in the game. And you can probably see my mind going to work over here, trying to sort all of these blocks into groups. Note to self, 1.19 blocks. We're probably going to need a couple of categories for those. Anyways, this process started with me combing through all of the blocks here, trying to put them into groups. Sometimes that's based on the materials being relative to one another. Like for example, we got glass over here. And then in this area, we've got our concretes, our powders, our terracottas, of which there's going to be a lot. And then there's wall blocks. So these are obviously not categorized by color, but by type. And that means that we have some odd collections like blocks from the end, so purple and yellow together. And then when it comes to the nether, there's a whole ton of stuff here. So what I might end up doing is moving some of the basalt ones into the blackstone just so, you know, similar building blocks are together. Now this was pretty easy at first going through all of this and of course I was thinking about the stone slab and wall variations. But then as we got into this area things started to get a little trickier. As you can see there are tons of items in this game. That's when I started to introduce the barrels. So when I open these up you'll see these are where some of the items go and again you can see how they are related together right? Although maybe you could argue the ingots should go along with the blocks here. And I might merge those together actually. I'm not here to show you every single decision, I'm trying to show you the thought process. So if you end up doing this yourself, you can see there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So for example, these ones are originally separated, but I realized it was just handy to put them together as the Amethyst Geode, and so Amethyst related items are in here. I was about to say that would include the Spyglass, but that's not stackable. And so as you might suspect with wood, all of the different types of things related to it will be sorted in here. I think that might even include oak leaves as well as oak saplings. And then with the nether ones, I thought I would put the woods in with these items too. And then we have a very big category of blocks. These are all of like the utility blocks in the game and there's probably going to be even more than I can fit into a single barrel. Anyways, I feel like I'm droning on a little bit, so let's go to some of the exceptions like light sources. Now, some of these can be categorized with other ones like the sea lanterns and prismarine, but I decided it's probably a good idea to put all light sources in the same place. However, I'm going to make exceptions for the ender chest and the beacon, of course. So then over here we have the misfit category where I'm not quite sure where to put them with other ones, although mycelium could probably go with this bunch. And then we have misfit items to I have to find a home for everything in the game and I still haven't like gotten through all of the different screens here. 
Foodstuffs is one of those ones that's just going to sort itself. Everything there can stay together. And you know what? I think I can put all of the brewing ingredients and bottles. All of these blocks can go in a chest together. Oh, and I guess the last thing to mention is that each of these categories is going to need a representation block to help me remember what it is. That's going to be placed on the floor in the storage room in front of the chest. And then we have to play another game of choosing how to lay them out. Like, do we want to group certain types of building blocks together? And also we want to consider that the stuff over here will get sorted faster and quicker. So we actually want to put like the more common materials kind of around the front and then the rarer they get, maybe the further away they are from the beginning of the storage system. So I've got an absolute ton of work on my hands. I've only really scratched the surface of this. And then I guess we have to play yet another game where I then need to go and hunt all of those items because there's things like scoots and turtle eggs that I haven't even touched. This gives me a reason to try and sort every item in the game. And so when I figured out my layout and what's going to go into those filter chests, I'm going to try and find like a really quick and creative way to show you. And hopefully I get to do that in the next episode, right? So between now and then I'm going to be working away on this and hopefully figuring out the master plan for the storage. And on that note, there isn't too much more for us to do this episode as we have constructed this beautiful beast behind me, which will get a makeover. I'm not going to leave it like this. Believe me on that. Anyway, it's the end of the episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll be seeing you soon with another one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.